The Equitable Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, an official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Before opening tonight's file, this first broadcast of 1946, this first week in January, is a good time to look forward into the future and back at the past. We of the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States are happy to report that the end of World War II finds our society in a stronger position than ever before. Our membership, our assets, and the amount of life insurance owned by our members increased during the war years. So the Equitable Society has weathered this war as successfully as it did three previous wars and seven major depressions. We wish to report also that in the future, as in the past, the premium dollars of Equitable Society members will be invested in ways that benefit the entire country. And by serving its members, the Equitable Society will continue to serve America. Tonight's file, Crime in the Roaring Twenties. This week, as America begins the first year of another post-war era, she faces here at home, just as she did some 25 years ago, those many grave problems which grow out of war. But of them all, none is a greater menace to the right of American citizens to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness than that problem which is splashing more and more black ink across the front pages of our newspapers every day. Crime. Addressing the International Association of Chiefs of Police recently, Director J. Edgar Hoover of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, your FBI, uttered this warning. After every great war, there has been a recession of moral fortitude. This one will be no exception. I hope, as you do, that the racketeers, the overlords, the desperados, and the criminal scum who characterize the Roaring Twenties will not come back to the American scene. I fear, however, that this is wishful thinking. Once they get a start and find they can succeed, we shall face very serious trouble. It is the delinquent youngster of the war years who is now graduating into the ranks of seasoned criminals. They are now becoming the postgraduates of crime and are committing the more despicable offenses. It was the delinquent youngsters of 1917 and 18 who graduated into the seasoned criminals of that post-war era who made the Roaring Twenties roar. Roar with the explosions of pistols, machine guns, and pineapple bombs. Will it happen here again? This is how it happened then. This is how one delinquent youngster of 1917 became a postgraduate of crime in the Roaring Twenties. In a cellar room of the Black Cat Club, the roadhouse just outside a large Midwestern city, the slot machines and dice games, as usual, were taking more than giving. While upstairs on the main floor... The young hip blast set were drinking bootleg liquor in dim corners and dancing the black bottom to a pasty-faced orchestra. Presently, young Red Martin and two companions sweep into the room and take over a booth in a corner. Hey, waiter. Yeah? Give these guys a setup and bring me a Coke, will you? Okay. What's with the Coke? Why don't you take a real drink, Red? None of that rot gut for me, pal. You can't make dough out of it and ulcers, too. And I'm going to make dough out of it. Yeah? How do you mean? Tell you all about it in a minute. Hey, look. Yeah? A couple of dames over there making a big play. Forget them. I'll show you something with real class. Where? That blonde. Huh? 
There she goes now, toward the back. Hey. That's for me, fellas. Are you kidding, Red? You know who that is? That's Legs Miller's dame. I know. Guy that runs this joint? Yeah. Look, stupid. Don't you know who Legs Miller really is? Yeah, I know. He does a little bootlegging. A huh? little? He ain't in the pint and quart business. He runs the stuff by the truckload. Yeah? Sure. And he's the guy I'm here to do business with. Are you huh? kidding, Red? Where's your setup, boys? Your coke, Red. Okay, say, uh, tell Casey I want to see him. Sure. Now, before this Casey gets here, I want to tell you guys something. Okay. Up to now, we've just been playing a nickel and dime rackets. It's time we graduated. How? We'll hook up with a gang like Legs Miller's, make some real dough, and if we're smart, we'll have our own business before you know it, okay? Well, well, gee, Red, I... Uh... What's the matter, you yellow? No, no, of course not, You want to but... see me, Red? Yeah. Well, what about? You know what about, Casey. Well, yeah, but Legs ain't... Don't give me that, he's here. I saw his dame go back a minute ago. Look, Red, the guy is busy. I want to see him. Now. Okay, kid. Come on. Stick right here, boys. I'll be back with a deal. Legs. Yeah, Casey? Hey, uh, you got a minute? What is it? I, uh, I got a guy here. I want you to talk to you. Okay. Bring him in. You want me to leave? No, stick around, honey. Go ahead, Red. Okay. This here is Red Martin. Hiya. Hiya, Legs. What do you want, kid? I want to talk business. I'm not a kid. <laughs> he means now he's shaving, honey. <laughs> but where did he get those big shoulders? You like him, sweetheart? What do you mean by that crack, kid? Darling, he means do I like him? And I do. Look, Legs. Do you want to talk business or don't you? Okay, Mr. Martin. What kind of business? Did Casey tell you anything about me? Yeah. What's on your mind? Well, I got a proposition for you. Yeah? You've been doing pretty good for yourself, but you could be doing a whole lot better. No kidding. Yeah. Here's my deal. This will really put you on top. I got some guys, you got some guys. I bring my guys in and join up with you and work on a commission. Before you know it, everybody in the whiskey business is working for us. That's your proposition? Yeah. How's it sound to you? Casey. Huh? Bounce this bum. Wait a minute. I said bounce him. Keep away from me. I'll walk out of here under my own power. But I want you to remember something, Legs. Next time you and me get together, it'll be you that gets the bounce. What? And your dame here will get to stick around and try out these big shoulders. Boy, you... What happened, Red? Did you make a deal? No. But I made a promise. So let's get started on it. What are we going to do? First, we're going to get lots of power on wheels somewhere. Come on. Crime, like history, repeats itself. This juvenile delinquent product of World War I has his counterpart today. Somewhere in the nation, a youngster like Red Martin may be planning a similar career of ruthless violence. Let him listen, then. Listen and learn. The first report on Red Martin is received in the local office of the FBI. Special Agent Brown speaking. Morning, Mr. Brown. Police headquarters. I think this is one for you FBI fellas. All right. What is it? Morristown, across the state line last night. Yes? Three young fellas stuck up an all-night garage and auto store. It slugged the man on duty and escaped with a black Cadillac sedan. Mm-hmm. Believe they came back across the state line with it. What are the details? The garage man gave a pretty fair description of them. I've got all the facts about the car. Good. What do the thieves look like? Uh, one of them was about five feet eleven, big shoulders, red hair, seemed to be the leader. The other two... Give me your light, will you, Casey? You better wait. We, uh, we gotta stop for this railroad crossing, you know. <laughs> Don't worry. I ain't taking no chances with a load of legs, booze. Well, looks clear to me. Give me that light okay, before I get... Okay, put your hands up and get out of that... What is it? Hey, what's the idea? Shut up and get out of there quick. They ain't fooling, Casey. We better haul out. Yeah. Go ahead, kid. Right. This is for not moving when I told you. Mm. 
Drag him over to the ditch, Al, quick. Okay. Uh, you know where to drive the truck, Joe. Get at it. Sure. Casey, I guess we better rough you up a little, too, so everything will look on the up and up for you when your pal comes out of it. Okay. And you better not ride the next load we knock off. Legs might start wondering. Just tip me off about it. Right. Hey, you know something? What? Knocking off this truck makes me and Legs partners after all. What's the story, Bob? It's the Cadillac we're looking for, all right. And I've got some fingerprints. They abandoned it right at the scene of the hijacking? Yes. The watchman at the crossing who saw it take place said one hijacker drove off with a truck. And while he was calling the police, the other two disappeared on the run down the tracks. What about the two men in the truck? He was sure one of them was slugged. But by the time he made the call and got over there, there wasn't a sign of anybody or anything but the Cadillac. Since the victims didn't bother to report to the police, that tells what was in the truck. Liquor. Exactly. But why did the hijackers leave the Cadillac there? They don't have to worry about a hot car anymore. They can buy their own now. They obviously stole it to pull this job and get a stake. The start of a new gang, eh? Yes. So let's get busy and find out who they are and see how soon we can stop them. Hiya, Red. Oh, hiya, Joe. I've been looking all over for you. What's the matter? Huh? Nothing. Nothing. I just thought we might get a couple of dames and go dancing. I'm a scratch. Why? I already got a date. Oh, yeah? With who? Legs Miller's dame. Huh? Yeah, I sent word to her. I told her I'd be here. Oh, you did, huh? <laughs> what makes you think she'll come? She'll come. You know, uh, you mean plenty of trouble, Red. This kind of trouble I like. Yeah, but if Legs finds Wait a minute, up... wait a minute. Huh? She's coming in the door. Blow, will you? Okay, but take it easy, will you, Red? Hello, shoulders. Hi, honey. Sit down. Thanks. You want a drink? No. Okay. How's legs? He's all right. Did you uh, tell him you were coming here? Now, what do you think? Well, he's got to know sooner or later. What do you mean? About us. <laughs> You're wonderful. That's right. What about us? We're in business, baby. Just like that, huh? Look, I had this figured months ago. And when I get ready for you, that's when I sent you the word. Really? Yeah. You see, there was a lot of things I had to do along the way. Get cars, which I got. Get dough, which I got. And now you. Which you ain't got. Don't be a sucker, baby. I'm your kind of guy. How do you figure that? You hear that music? Hear what the guy is playing? Yeah. That's my favorite song. That's why he's playing it. See the box there? Yes. It's loaded with them orchids. Your favorite flower. And I got an order in with the jeweler for a ruby ring. That's your favorite rock. How did you know all this? I done research on you, honey. Now you see what I mean? I'm your kind of guy. You're forgetting something, Red. What's that? Legs. What about him? He's gonna have something to say about this. I figured that too, honey. You know something? I'm gonna give him a chance to, to say it. Gotta pay a call on Mr. Legs Miller tomorrow night. I found the dealer finally, Jim. Good. He sold them two second-hand Cadillacs. Here are the descriptions. Registered in what name? Jack Smith, obviously an alias. What did Jack Smith look like? The one with the red hair, according to the dealer. Mm-hmm. There's a report from Washington. Those fingerprints, Jim. Thanks. Did we get anything? On the redhead, yes. His name is George Red Martin. Served six months in a reformatory in 1917. Here's the full description and photos on the way. Good. I think I'd better get over to police headquarters and see if they have anything on the private life and public habits of said George Red Martin. Hey, 
doing? All right, you guys, listen to me a minute, will you? Right on, Bill. Now, here's what I figure we do. Yeah? Hello, darling. Oh, hi, honey. Come on in. Hey, what is this, Legs? A convention? No, sweetheart. It's sort of like a reception committee. For who? Mr. Casey. Oh. The boys here got some kind of bad reports on him. Like what? He's been hanging around with that punk Red Martin, which just about accounts for a lot of that liquor we've been losing lately. Yeah? Hiya, Legs. Come on in, Casey. Okay. What is this, uh, meeting or something? Yeah. A real important meeting. It's about you. What do you mean? Where have you been tonight? Oh, I was, uh, I was just down collecting a little dough I had riding on an egg. Why? Let's see the dough. Oh, sure. Here, I... Oh. Get up. Now, wait a minute, Legs. What's the matter with you? The horse's name was Red Martin, wasn't it? Red Martin? I don't know what you're talking... Okay, boys. Pick him up and take him out for a little ride. Now, wait a minute, Legs. Give me a chance, will you? Get him out of here, quick. All right, get him in the air, everybody. What? Cover him, boys. First one he makes a move for his heater gets a belly full of this. Hiya, honey. Hello, Red. Legs, this is what I told you would happen, remember? Yeah? I want all you guys to listen to me. I'm in and I'm taking over. Any of you don't want to play ball with me, line up against the wall and I'll check you off right now. Okay, then you're working for me. Hey, you, you come just in time, Red. Casey, get over there with legs. What? I said get over there. Oh, sure, but uh, what's your idea? There ain't gonna be any double crosses in my outfit. Huh? You double cross legs, you might double cross me. Now take it, both of you. Oh, all right, wait a minute. Wait. <laughs> Now on, as long as you play it straight, these big shoulders are yours. Now for a moment, let's talk about another kind of youngster. The kind of clean-cut American boy in a typical American home who is going to be one of America's worthwhile citizens. This week at the Equitable Society, one of the agents told me a story that gave me quite a kick. It seems that when he got home the other evening, his young son, Jimmy, aged eight, was chewing candy. Well, like fathers everywhere, he said, don't eat that candy now, Jimmy, you'll spoil your dinner. Where'd you get the candy anyway? Fred gave it to me, said Jimmy. His father's in the candy business, and he brings home samples. Say, Dad, why don't you ever bring home some life insurance samples? Well, Jimmy's dad tried to explain. Look, son, he said, life insurance isn't like candy. Candy is something you can see and feel and touch and taste right now. But life insurance... Well, now let's suppose that Fred's dad should die. There wouldn't be any more candy unless Fred's dad had arranged for life insurance to keep Fred supplied with candy and food and clothes. Well, Jimmy thought a minute, and then he said, I get it, I get it. Life insurance is candy for when the samples run out. Candy for when the samples run out. That's something to think about. Life insurance is candy for future delivery, security for tomorrow. Well, thinking about that makes us of the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States feel pretty happy about the work we do. There's a real satisfaction in being in a business like this. You see, we always know that what we're doing today will benefit boys like Jimmy and millions of other young Americans far, far into the future. Yes, this week and every week for more than 86 years, the Equitable Society has been building security for you, your home, and your country. And now back to the file on crime in the Roaring Twenties. Red Martin and his companions, delinquent youngsters of 1917, 
had now graduated into major crime. And together with thousands like themselves, whose potential counterparts after this war were to be far greater in number, had added the explosions of their guns to the roar of the Roaring Twenties. It is now some 30 or 40 minutes after Red Martin's blazing Tommy gun put him on the little throne which had been occupied by the man called Legs Miller. The murdered man has been discovered. The police notified. They, the special agents of the FBI, are now viewing the bodies. That's Legs, all right. The other one, I've heard him call Casey. Who did it, waiter, do you know? Uh, let me answer that, officer. It was Red Martin, wasn't it, waiter? Well, I, uh... uh it's Red Martin and his gang who have been knocking off Legs Miller's trucks. Is that right? I've seen Casey and Red Martin together. But why did Casey get it? I guess Martin doesn't want any double crosses on his staff. Mind anything, officer? A couple of slugs on the floor that went clear through him. I'd like to have them for a lab check, if you don't mind. Here you are. Obviously, Martin doesn't intend to do business here. No, uh, he'll probably set up a new headquarters. Waiter. Yes, sir. Did Legs Miller have a girlfriend? Yes, sir. Is this her picture on the desk here? Yes, sir. With all my love, honey. That's what she was called. We're taking this picture along, too, officer. All right, Mr. Brown. I guess we can go now. And let's keep our fingers crossed. This picture could be the clue to the whereabouts of Red Martin. Assuming you mean that when Red Martin takes over, he takes everything over. Right. Red. Yeah? What time is it? A little after ten. Thanks. <sighs> Matter you tired? No, darling, bored. What's the matter? Well, these past few days haven't been what you might call exciting. Now, look, honey, I told you... I know, you... we have to stay here until the heat's off. Couldn't you have picked someplace else for a hideout? Did it have to be two dingy rooms above a garage? We ain't gonna be here forever. We already have been. Who is it? Me, Al. Come on in. Hey, Blondie. Hello, Junior. Wanna see me, Red? Yeah. Tell the boys that tomorrow we start expanding. You do? How? We're going to start taking over Mr. Cicero's customers. It's a big order. I'm a big guy. Tomorrow the boys start calling on Cicero's customers to tell them from now on they're buying from us, okay? It'll be okay until Cicero decides to pay us a visit. That's what I want. It'll be a quick way to take over. We'll be here waiting for them. Pass the word on, Al. All right. See you later. After Mr. Cicero, do we hide out again? Come here, baby. Well? Look, just play along with us for a few more days, will you? Oh, I wish you didn't have those big shoulders. What luck, Bob? Enough, I think. What do you mean? I checked the photographer this morning who made this picture of Honey. Well? He said all he knew, she was a nightclub singer. Uh -huh. So I checked with the booking offices, and I finally got this address. Whose? Her mother's, on the north side. I'm bound to see her mother once in a while. We'll keep a 24-hour surveillance on the house and wait for Honey to show up. <laughs> Brown speaking. Jim, the girl just came home to see her mother. Yes? Better get over here so we can follow her back and pick up Martin. You follow yourself, Bob, and then come on in. Why? I want to pick up everybody at once. Yes, but how? You keep tabs on Honey and find Martin's hideout. I think I've got a way for seeing that everybody is at home when we go calling. <laughs> Joe? Yeah? Stand over there by the window. Right. Now, find yourself by the door. Okay. And don't take any chances. Have your rods on that door when she opens. And, honey. Yes, darling? For the tenth time, go on back home to your mother's... Nothing doing. I'm staying here. Look, baby, that was Cicero that called and said he was coming over. Not a magazine salesman. Cicero. I'm not afraid of Cicero. So I suppose you like his shoulders, too. Darling. Okay, then get out of line of that door anyway. Hey, Red. Yeah? They're here. How many? Big cars full. 
Get set for anything. They'll be upstairs any minute. But they won't all come up here. Never mind what stays downstairs. Just take care of what comes in that door. That's all we have hey. to... Listen, Red. Only one guy coming up. Yeah. Must be Cicero himself. Gonna try talking first, I guess. Shall we let him have it when he comes in? I'll take care of him. Come in. Evening. That's not Cicero. Hey. Who are you, pal? I'm Special Agent Brown of the FBI. FBI? Hey, you better get out of here. There might be a lot of shooting in a minute. There'll be an awful lot if any of you starts at Martin. Those are FBI agents down there, and they're ready to blast you to kingdom come. But Cicero I'm just... afraid I'm guilty of impersonating Cicero, Mr. Martin. I... What? We just wanted to show you how easily you boys can be taken over, that's all. Now drop your guns and file quietly downstairs. We'll go to headquarters and arrange futures for one and all. Young Red Martin's short and unprofitable career of crime ended with his death in the electric chair. The members of his mob were sentenced to long terms in prison. That was a page out of the Roaring Twenties, part of the criminal aftermath in America of World War I. Already the criminal aftermath of World War II is splashing black ink across the front pages of our newspapers. It happened before... It can happen here again. The FBI and your local law enforcement officers will fight it day and night. But it must be fought by all the people if it is to be licked. What are you doing about it in your community? Before we tell you about next week's case from the files of the FBI, a word about a man worth knowing. To the FBI, America looks for national security. And to the Equitable Society, three and a quarter million Americans look for the financial security of life insurance. These three and a quarter million people are the sole owners of the Equitable Society. Because you see, the moment they purchased life insurance through an Equitable Society agent, they became part owners of this great mutual organization. Yes, like your FBI, the Equitable Society representative in your community is constantly working for the security of you, your home, and your country. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Innocent Killer. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Society's broadcast are taken from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The role of J. Edgar Hoover was impersonated. But all other names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was under the direction of Frederick Steiner, the author was Frank Ferries, and your narrator was Dean Carlton. This is your FBI, is a Jerry Devine production. And now this is Carl Frank speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time, for this is your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.